by Christ's resurrection that we are confident that we have a savior. All the other religions in this world, their masters and their leaders are dead. But Christ is alive forevermore. When last Sunday, uh, Friday, we decided to talk about Christ's death, we saw how Christ became prepared, but in agony cried to the Father, why have thou forsaken me? Later on, we also heard of the comments of the soldiers who crucified him, that truly, this is the son of the living God. But the point that I want to make is that the disciples themselves, the apostles themselves, they were scattered because of number one, fear. Fear of what? Fear that people will just catch on them and beat them up. That you said this man is the son of God. How come that now he has been killed? Can a God die? Another fear was that they, they wanted to hide themselves from public ridicule. People would say, hey, look at them. They were saying that. They had a master who lived and will never die. Now here he is. So they were covering themselves, hiding themselves because of fear. They were ashamed. They were disappointed. They lost hope. And that is what I want you to understand. They had lost hope. But when we read the Gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, something has been established. And in the Acts of Apostles, something was also established. And not only that, after all those things that happened, if you read about the history of Christian movement, and even to the present time, the name of Jesus is revolutionary. It is able to cause wonders in the lives of people. Able to transform people and make them different. All because of what took place on this day which we are celebrating. The resurrection. Hallelujah. Let us take our Bibles to Mark chapter 16 verse 1 to 6. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome both bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, say this after me, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us. Amen. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away for it was very large. Say it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed but he said to them, do not be alarmed. Say, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Amen. I just want you to understand one simple thing, that when there was disappointment and frustration, and the people were ashamed of themselves, that we have followed the campaign that this is the son of God. Now, he has been arrested and he has been killed. How could this be? We don't have any follower anymore. The people are harassing us. We are going for a hiding and we are ashamed and disappointed. Our hope is totally removed. This was the position the true position of the apostles and the disciples. 
And I want you to understand that. Sometimes you become frustrated. You lose hope. You become even ashamed of certain things that have happened to you. And uh, you, you are hiding yourself either because of fear or because of embarrassment. It happens to people. This one, in a more serious way, happened to the disciples. They couldn't come forward. They couldn't face people. But there were some women who were so bold, they didn't care. Say they didn't care. But their major concern was that this man was an honorable man. If he has been killed at all, we do not want people to be passing by and then the smell of the body, the corrupted body, the decomposed body will be coming out and people will say, it is that Jesus who is smelling. So some women decided that as they usually practiced, they will go and anoint him with spices, fragrance, so that he, the smell will not come around for people to make nasty comments, hopeless comments. And these women always include Mary Magdalene according to all the four scriptures. But then when they were going, there was one typical thing which they were afraid of. Who will roll away the stone? Ask somebody, who will roll away the stone? We are going, we are carrying spices. The soldiers are guarding. But who will roll away the stone for us? Let me explain. Those of you, how many people have been to Israel before? Good. Those of you who have gone to see that spot, you see that it is a rock. And then they carved, they hewed some portion out of it so that that portion became hollow and made it like a, a bed for Christ or for the owner of that tomb to be buried there. He was Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man. And the way it was done, they were able to carve out a stone from the rock that's how they did it. So that when after they have created the hollow space, if they want to cover it up, you will not see that there is a door. You will see it is the rock. You understand what I'm saying? And the stone which was carved out to cover the door when it is fixed, becomes part of the rock. And you will see it as, as, it as a rock. And this is what I want you to understand. And you will need very strong, well-eating people with muzzles about hand to be able to put the stone there to cover it. Bringing it out is more tedious because it fixes into it. You may need, you know, traditionally, they may need a fulcrum, something to push it in, edge it there for the people to bring it down, making sure it doesn't fall down because they can't lift it up. The Bible confesses that it was very large. So, you will need a very strong, powerful, militant people who will be able to fix it there, more so who will be able to take it back. It was very, 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 very strong. Very, very large. Very, very heavy. And so when these people saw that Jesus had been, the Joseph of Arimathea had been given the permission to put this man in the tomb, then they said that, okay, there is a stone carved for that. Heavy stone. Why can't we, as the soldiers, the, the big people, the heavy people, the strong people, the muscular people, fix it there so that nobody will go and touch the body and steal the body. And on the third day, we shall see whether he will rise up. So it was a challenge for them to roll 
this stone which had been there lying idle to go and fix it exactly where the door was so that Jesus would be locked behind inside the rock. And if you are passing by, you will not even see that there is a door there because it was all part of the rock. So when they were going, their main obsession and their main fear is that we have the fragrance. But who opened the door for us? Who would take, roll away the stone for us? And when they went, to their amazement, that part of the rock has been rolled over. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then some well-dressed people from heaven. Matthew and all of them record that they were angels. And all what they said to them is that, who are you looking for? Are you looking for Jesus of Nazareth? He has risen. Jesus of Nazareth has risen. And it was shocking to every one of them. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, if you read it, the Bible says something in Acts chapter 1. This is what the Bible says in verse 3. To whom he, that he is Jesus, also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Say infallible. That means what cannot be challenged because they are clear. Many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So according to the Acts of Apostles, this Jesus presented himself to many people, including his disciples, his uh, 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 apostles, and to some people he wanted to reveal to for 40 good days on, the, on, the, on, the, on, on this earth. Jesus did that. And there was a proof, many infallible proofs, that he was alive. Say amen to that. Amen. But then when we come back to the question that these people were saying, who rule away the stone? That is a, 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 a problem of frustration. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can be frustrated. You want to do something, but you can be frustrated. And the stone, the rock, is hiding somebody you want to reach to. The rock may be hiding your treasure. But I want to tell you that there is a power called resurrection power of Jesus Christ. That resurrection power of Jesus Christ can roll away the stones. Hallelujah. They were anticipating that who could roll away the stone. But now I'm going to give you a deeper revelation about one word, which something which you, you probably you have never thought about. When these soldiers who were watching saw how the whole rock was rolled, then they started celebrating that, hey, the man we killed is powerful. Before he came out, the rock was rolled. So they started dancing, rock and roll. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you I'm guided by the spirit and I've made a research to find out. That thing that you hear, they call rock and roll. Now they have changed it. The devil has changed it to mean something foolish. So these soldiers started dancing. And whenever people came to ask them, he said, the rock will have been rolled. And that man is gone. And they were dancing around to celebrate, to prove to the Jewish people, to prove to the high priests and other people that they were, are, were rather wrong. It became a tradition that people started dancing that rock and roll. Hallelujah. 
But let me tell you, anything that will glorify Jesus, the devil will make a copy of it. And now when they use the word rock and roll, it means many things. When you are rocking a woman, it means you are making sex with a woman. When you are roaring, then probably you know what you are doing. And then when they are rocking, and it may be drugs. But I want to tell you that the originality of the, that statement is that the rock that was a frustration has been rolled over by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And so the, the, the dancing called rock and roll was the dance of the soldiers who were trying to prove to the people that here we are, the man that we killed, the man that they said we should watch, the rock has been rolled. And here we are, we are dancing. We don't care about Jews. We don't care about anything. But the, what we know is the truth. So they started trying to give them some bribes to go and say that the, the body was stolen by the, uh, by the disciples. I put to you that the, the, those people couldn't have gone uh, to, to take this rock or this stone from the, that uh, is place and take Jesus Christ. Because soldiers were recruited to go and guard. These were the soldiers the people were afraid of, isn't it? They were the people they were afraid of. They were the people they were run, the disciples were running away from. How could these poor disciples come back and say that we have beaten the soldiers and then with the same weak strength, that frustrated strength, go and remove this powerful rock, this powerful stone, which was part of the rock. How could they do it? And they bribed them to say a different thing. But if they had said it, then they should have been crucified themselves. Because they knew, but they started dancing about that the rock has been rolled. Hallelujah. Amen. The rock has been rolled. They held their hands and they were dancing and they were jumping. You know, you can see so just how they can behave. And their dance became what they call rock and roll. But later, 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 it has developed and the devil is making a copycat of it. But I want to assure you, whether the devil makes a copycat of it, every rock in your life can be ruled. Amen. In Jesus' name, clap unto the living God. Every rock in your life, everything which is keeping something, frustrating you, hindering you from reaching your treasure, I tell you, by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, it can be rolled over. Yeah. Clap unto the living God for that. And I want to assure you, today I'm not preaching long. I want to assure you that there is no power which will hide Jesus. Jesus accepted to die so that he could go down there to hate, to hell, and to fight with the devil take the keys of death from him according to the scriptures. If you read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible talks about that. How he came flesh and blood so that he would die in order to destroy the works of the one who has power over death, the devil. So that those who for the fear of death have become bound will be set free. Hallelujah. And because of that resurrection power, he was able to capture the keys of death, the keys of hell. So I want to tell you that that Jesus who rose from death has the keys. He can, he can shut the door of hell to you and nobody can open it. And he can open the door also for you to go to hell and nobody can lock it. He has the keys. Clap unto the living God for that. And when he was coming... The only hindrance was the rock. But the same resurrection power turned the rock away. And the angels saw, the, 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 the soldiers saw that the way the earthquake and everything was shaking as if the whole rock was rolling. And all what they saw is that the stone, the door has been opened for Jesus to come out. And I want to tell you that the same power of Christ's resurrection which was able to roll that rock to open the stone, that same power is alive today. Amen. And that is why, that is why Paul said, there is one mystery that I'm looking for. 
That is one mystery. I am I'm a Pharisee. I am a lawyer. I have learned. I can do philosophy. I can analyze them. But the power of his resurrection, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Nobody can understand it except God himself. Because it's by the finger of God, which is the Holy Spirit, that this, these stones were rolled. Let me tell you, the same Holy Spirit is governing the church today. Has visited the church today. That same power, that resurrection power is alive. And that is why when Peter was locked in the prison, and everybody thought that he is going to be killed the next day, the same resurrection power of Christ set him free. He was, the doors were opened by the power of Christ's resurrection. And the same thing happened also to Paul and Silas. That the same thing happened, they were singing and they were praising God. And the resurrection power of Christ came to dwell among them. That same resurrection power of Christ is with you. And I show you today, and let it be a seed in your life. Whatever rock, which is a frustration and a hindrance in your life, can be rolled. And therefore, there is rock and roll. The rock and roll that we know is the power of Christ's resurrection. It's not the madness of the world, but the power of Christ's resurrection. I want you to understand today that there may be a rock in your life. A rock of hindrance. A rock that is hiding certain power. That is hiding your resources, your wisdom, your knowledge, your authority. Everything in your life. Whether it is barrenness or bad marriage or whether it is sickness, whether it is it is a career, it's a trouble. Anything which is which is a frustration to you, that rock can be ruled by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you.